Hello friends, I'm back with another new video. Today we are going to discuss differential form of Faraday's law. I have already uploaded a video with the title integral form of Faraday's law and we have studied that. So in continuity to that, today we are going to discuss differential form of Faraday's law. So if you have watched that video, then you can relate that the figure drawn is almost the same. And if you haven't watched the video, then I would put the link in the description box of that video. So now here I have made a loop which encloses some area denoted by S. And magnetic field is passing. Now, since this board represents 2D surface, but this image is a 3D one. So, I just want all of you to understand that here, it's not like that the surface is there and the magnetic field lines are just passing over the surface. It's not like that. So, please don't take it wrong. In fact, it's a 3D image and magnetic field lines are actually passing. They're just crossing it. You can say either that they are going into the surface. Okay. They are just yeah. going into the surfaces. We can say that field lines are passing through the surface, not above the surface, passing over the surface. They're passing through the surface. So it's a 3D image. Now what's different here? In integral form of Faraday's law, the final formula that we obtain, the final expression that we obtain is in the form of integrals. We make use of integrals of mathematics. And in a differential form of Faraday's law, the final expression would be in the form of differentials. And the most common operator, differential operator that we use in electromagnetics, especially all the expressions in electromagnetics make use of that, and that is del operator. So if you are an undergrad student, then you must have studied about Dell operator in your maths class. Before starting, again, I would write to repeat what are the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. First law says that whenever there is change in magnetic flux linked with a closed circuit, an emph is induced in the circuit. And this emph lasts so long as the change in the magnetic flux actually takes place. And what is magnetic flux? Means the number of magnetic lines passing through an area of cross section. So here these field lines, magnetic field lines represented by B, they are passing through the surface. Okay, But we have chosen a particular loop and a particular surface because this loop, this this line, this curve that I have drawn, it's a loop and it encompasses, it encloses the area S, surface S, okay. And now you know that if magnetic flux is changing, if number of magnetic line passing through the surface, they are changing, so an emph would be induced. That means an electric field would set up and current would start moving. But this current would last as long as the change in magnetic flux keeps on taking place. The moment the change, not the magnetic flux, but the change in magnetic flux stops, no more M would be generated. And the second law states that magnitude of induced M, so whatever M is generated, its magnitude is directly proportional to rate of change of magnetic flux associated with the closed circuit. So whatever is the rate of change of magnetic flux. So whenever it's rate, that means it's with respect to time. So rate of change of magnetic flux means d phi by dt. And so that is proportional to the magnitude of induced amp generated. So now let's start with the today's topic. So from the topic integral form of Faraday's law, we obtain this expression where zeta represents the induced amp. How much amp is generated or induced because it's happening all because of this change in magnetic flux taking place. This amp induced, the integral form 
of this induced m denoted by zeta was this because we have integrals in the expression. Now note that in integral form we made use of the surface. We talked about the area. Area which the loop encloses. And we also know that magnetic flux phi is basically B dot A. That means magnetic field dot product with surface or area. Okay. So in that sense, we got this expression. But it's not only about area that the magnetic field lines are passing through the area. That's okay. But the field line that are passing through this area S, they are generating the M. And M is basically electric field which would lead to current in the loop. So current will flow through the loop only. Because otherwise this loop is basically you can take it to be a wire. There is nothing in between. But magnetic field lines are passing through that. It's passing through the surface, the area which this wire or loop encloses. But whatever current would be generated, that would be generated only on this loop. Okay. So the current element or we say the induced mph element is associated with the length, with the length element. Because here we are just talking about the loop only, okay, the wire portion. So that is dl. So another formula that we can write of this induced m can be zeta equal to single integral over the closed loop e dot dl. Since the current, the induced m, that is basically also the current that is flowing through the loop. It's not only the magnetic field lines passing through the surface, but those lines are actually generating the m and the current. See, m is associated with two things. So now the current or the electric field that is being produced, which would generate the current, that will go along the loop only. So that's why we have E dot DL, the length element here. And this is the integral because here DL is the single length element. And then we are going to integrate it over the entire loop. We are just considering this particular element and then we are going to integrate it over the entire loop. So that's why we have got the sign of integration. And this loop represents it's a closed loop. Okay, so this way we have got these two formula now. This from the previous video. So now we can equate them because both relate to zeta. So we get, so now we can equate these two expressions now. E dot dl is equal to minus double integral over the closed surface, curly v by curly d dot dl. And make sure that this dot is very important because dot product is there. You must have studied, it's always taught in the introductory course or as the first chapter when you enter undergraduate physics class that whenever we have the integrals, one with having dl involving length and the other one involving area, then there is a very popular theorem which relates these two. And if we have one portion having double integral with the area and triple integral with the volume, then again we have one theorem. So if you remember, then the theorem which relates, which links triple integral volume element to double integral surface element, that is known as Gauss divergence theorem. And the theorem which relates single integral length element to the double integral surface or area element is known as Stokes theorem. So whenever you find a situation like this where you have a length element on one side and area element of, on the other side, then it is for sure that you will always use Stokes theorem because Stokes theorem would always come to rescue. It's without doubt, whenever we solve the derivations in electromagnetic, especially this Faraday law and the chapter so on, Always we go for Stokes theorem. So now let's write down what does that say. Now in Stokes theorem, we make use of curl operator. 
and in gauss divergence theorem we make use of divergence operator so stokes theorem make use of curl operator but this one side is totally correct so we can use it as it is e dot dl because this is what the expression of stokes theorem looks like so one of the expression is exactly correct so whatever the vector is if you integrate it over a closed loop you know, with respect to a length element then that vector this expression would turn to because if there is a loop it would definitely and it is a, if it's a closed one if a closed loop is there e could be any vector if we are talking about stokes theorem so it would definitely enclose some surface so that's why always length element is associated with surface element or the area element so it would enclose some surface area and area is a two dimensional thing that's why we are using double integral and over the closed loop because it is a closed loop so again a closed surface we have shown now that is equal to del the most common del operator cross e dot ds and remember all these are vectors basically so you always have to put the arrow above them so this is what stokes theorem looks like now we are going to use it in getting the desired expression since both these equations 3 and 4 they have one common expression which is single integral of e dot dl over the closed loop here also so that means we can equate these two expressions so from 3 and 4 we get this expression now you see whenever we have an expression like this which involves length element and area on the other hand then we always use stokes theorem because eventually to get an expression we want to remove the sign of integral and these signs of integral can only be removed when same integral signs are on the both side be it single integral on both side or double integral on both side or triple integral on both side only then we can remove those integral signs to give more efficient expression and since we are talking of differential form of faraday's law so we cannot expect to have integral in the expression we have to solely produce the expression in the form of differentials only so we have to remove the integral sign and how can we do that with the help of stokes theorem whenever you see length element on one side and surface element or area element on the other side of the of the whole equation or expression always use stokes theorem which says this and now since we have got double integral enclosing a closed surface s on both sides we can simply remove them and on removing what do we get on removing the integrals we get this expression del cross e is equal to minus curly b by curly b because this dot ds remember these quantities are associated with integral only whenever we do integration we always have with respect to what thing so once integrals are removed this expression is also removed because this is also same on both sides so now we have got a purely differential form of faraday's law this expression doesn't contain any integral sign and we have simply got del cross e is equal to minus curly b by curly b so now it's uh, important faraday's law is important in the sense that it actually gives us the expression which relates two most important factors of electromagnetic field on one hand we have electric field and on the other hand we have magnetic field and from this expression only we can say that electric field and magnetic field they are not two different fields but they are a form of a combined field which we know as electromagnetic field whenever there is magnetic field you would find electric field there and whenever there is electric field you would find magnetic field there so that's why we get the whole concept of electromagnetic force or electromagnetic field from this expression so 
this was all for today in the previous video we did integral form of faraday's law which only had integrals in the expression we used that expression in this present video and also we made use of the surface as well as the loop to get this expression thanks for watching